What's up, everyone? Welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, I am going to be building an inside hemisphere tool or a negative ball turning tool or a negative radius turning tool. I've never actually seen one of these made before. This is an attachment for my lathe. This is the actual tool here. So yes, I did manage to make one. This video is gonna be about me making this tool. So the story behind why I made this is because I was a bonehead and I put my engine together incorrectly. This is the engine that lives inside of my Kawasaki X2. I swapped it over to an 1100 triple and this is an OEM head off of that jet ski. So this is three heads that are all cast into one and the domes or the centerpiece here is part of the head, it's not replaceable. Because I put my engine together incorrectly, it damaged this surface area and that is not replaceable. You have to replace the whole head. Not a big deal because I do have two more of these, but I have already spent about a week modifying that particular cylinder head. So I was quite upset when it happened. So any ordinary person would just modify another head and uh, yeah, make sure they put their engine together properly. But I am not an ordinary person. So what I decided to do is actually cut out holes in the cylinder head that I had already modified and then build a tool so that I could make my own domes. Spoiler alert, here is one of the domes that I have made. Video coming on the Joel Arsenal YouTube channel all about that. But for now, that's all you get to see. This is a Crash KV997 cylinder head and it actually has a similar setup with a cap and the replaceable domes. There's a few benefits to this. One benefit is that these usually have O-rings for seals so you don't need to deal with a gasket or glue every single time you take it apart. Another benefit is that if you're a bonehead, you put your engine together wrong or if you're just unlucky and your engine grenades on you, then you can just replace this piece instead of replacing the whole head. Another benefit is that you can have different domes for different performance characteristics. You can have higher or lower compression. You can have different squish band ratios, different uh, volumes, all sorts of different things. We're not gonna get into that. What we're gonna do in this video is actually build this tool. It's not gonna be an in-depth video, but it is a pretty straightforward tool to make. This mounts onto my lathe and it has a couple of bearings. In the video, I only show putting in one bearing, but there's actually two bearings. And this simply bolts down to the lathe and then you rock this back and forth. And because it is on a pivot, it cuts a perfect hemispherical shape. Semi-hemispherical shape. You'll see what it does. Anyway, let's get into the video. Pardon the noise in the background, my neighbor appears to be breaking ground to put in a garage or something and uh, so we're just going to have to deal with that. I've got the vise back in the mill and I've got the piece of metal clamped into the vise and now I'm going to chop a bit of material off of this partly because I want to make it so that the bolts mount a little bit lower and partly because this is a used chunk of metal and it already had a slot cut in it and so I'm going to cut it down to that level. I am using a half inch five flute carbide end mill and as you guys can see it is making really quick work of this material whatever it happens to be. Blowing compressed air on the part and on the tool not only make for better footage because it clears away the chips and you can see what's happening but it actually makes for a better surface finish and takes care of the issue of chip welding. Chip welding is what happens when you get so many chips building up that they get hot and actually fuse to the tool or the part. And if the uh, chips build up in there, they can actually damage the surface finish on the part and it just doesn't look as good. Uh, 
I decided to take advantage of one of the holes that was already drilled in this part and drill that hole out bigger. So first I'm using this one inch drill bit and then we're going to use a boring head to bore it out to final size. Hot. Take a measurement, I guess. Before we even take a measurement, I guess we can try to sit the bearing in place, which I don't have room to do from the top. Oh, oh, it's gonna go. It is gonna go, okay. Might be tight, but that's good. I'll probably use some Loctite to hold the bearings in place. Oh man, that couldn't be, that couldn't be better. I couldn't ask for more than that. Wow, okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Then I need to thread some holes for, so that it will actually fit on my lathe. Then I need to build a shaft that is actually going to hold the tool that will do the cutting. Now well, there's gonna be a whole lot of this, folks. So uh, I'm not gonna film all of it. I was using this guy here and I switched over to the more pointy one and the surface, surface finish is pretty amazing. So I think this should fit, especially once I cool it off a little bit. But yeah, this, hopefully this works. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect fit. What we need to do is take it out of here then I'm gonna put it in the mill and I'm gonna to have to, well, lay out, figure out exactly where my tool needs to be. Ooh, this could be, this could be tricky. This could I'm gonna put a little bit of magic marker on here, a little bit of Sharpie on here. And then I've got a piece in the chuck, a center pointer basically in the chuck. I don't know if you guys can see it there but it is going to be used to scribe a line onto here to tell me where the center line will be. So this is gonna be bolted directly down to this surface. That's how it should sit. It's currently at the height where it's going to be. And so now if I push this against that and rotate it, it should give me a line exactly where I want the cutter to be. I've got it set up in the mill. I'm ready to put a slot in it. I'm gonna kind of play this by ear, meaning that I'm not really set on any specific depth. And at first I'm just going to cut a half inch groove through it. And then we'll kind of go from there. I'll figure out uh, some of the details. But uh, first I'm just gonna start cutting. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to be able to drill holes and I don't know that if, if I can drill them I don't know if I'm going to be able to tap them because this material is very hard stuff. I have no idea what it is but it is brutal to work with. couple of holes in there and I got them threaded so now I'm gonna pop it back into the lathe and cut this little nub off all right folks time to build this bad boy up I'm gonna put some locking compound on the bearing and the shaft just so that nothing moves free the uh, the bottom bearing is actually quite tight and I have to hammer it in and out press it in and out but uh, the top bearing is a little bit loose. So 
So I'm just going to put compound on both of them and uh, yeah, then I won't have to worry about it. Battery's almost dead, so this clip probably won't work out. But hey, I'm a dreamer. All right, that slides in there nicely. But I do want to tap it down into place. I'm gonna grab a bolt because I have a bolt nearby. I'm gonna tap that in until it gives me a nice solid sound. Let me know it's seated. And then we're gonna try it out. <laughs> I can verify that we are a little bit off center. I need to raise the tool up, which is quite unfortunate because I just Loctited everything in place. These are the results of the test part that I made. I actually cut a dome in one side. As you guys can see, it's concaved. And then I parted it off and did the same thing on the other side just to see if it was repeatable. And in fact it is. I am quite happy with the results. I did hit this with a little bit of sandpaper. I think 120 grit or something like that. Anyway, it turns out quite nice. I'm very pleased with the way this tool works. It removes a lot of material pretty quickly. I was surprised about that. I thought I was going to have to take very small cuts, but I can actually take quite aggressive cuts. So that is good news. So what I'm going to be doing with this tool is making the center of the cylinder head domes. These are hemispheres. And so I'm going to be cutting those out. And then this part here is cut at an angle, like a straight angle of uh, three degrees, I believe. So I'm gonna be cutting my new ones at four degrees and I will be using this tool. Well, that just about does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this nonsense, be sure to subscribe. Before we end the video, I will say that I am going to be building the cylinder head domes in a video on the Joel Arsenal YouTube channel. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to go and check out that channel. Uh, link in the description below. Also, I ended up using razor blades to shim this up to the proper cutting height. I just put the razor blades in between the lathe and this block of metal itself. That worked really well. It uh, cut perfectly on center. It did take me quite a while to actually set this up for cutting the domes. And uh, yeah, there was a few struggles that I actually didn't show or point out very well in this video. I do not know what this material is. I was given this material and it is extremely fussy. I was going to say it's extremely hard, but it's not necessarily really hard. I think it either work hardens or heat hardens. One hole drilled, threaded and tapped perfectly okay. The next hole I had to sharpen the drill bit like six times to actually get it to go through. It kept burning up the tip of the drill bit and it was just completely miserable to tap and so yeah i don't know what this material is 
I was given this by Jet Ski Brothers Jacob, so almost all the material in this tool was given to me by him. So thanks, Jacob, for that. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Once again, I will be releasing more footage of this tool in use, building the uh, cylinder head domes, this bit here. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. See you next time. All right, I've got my helmet on so I can actually film driving it. Take it around the block and see if I can get arrested. Get my key. Oh, she's a little rich. smell that stale fuel <laughs> what a ridiculous car absolutely ridiculous Driving it around the block makes me not want to. <laughs> driving it around the block makes me not want to sell it, but uh, guy's on his way now. <laughs>